it's, it's been decades in the making, it's going to be decades in its recovery. I think we're all agreed that this is a long haul, that the, the amount of harm done, even if we start tomorrow to undo it, that we're talking about <clears throat> a long period of recovery. I think that there is, there is clearly a massive problem here from agriculture. That's the main source of pollution of Loch Ney. But I think there is a mistake that people make in lumping all farmers and all of agriculture into one category. Going for growth and the mindset behind going for growth needs to be changed. Um, NI Water needs to be held accountable. Um, the, the area in which Stormont here I think is most culpable over the last 10 or so years is this going for growth strategy where they, they wanted to turbocharge the output of agriculture in Northern Ireland. Don't cut your hedges in the middle of August um, and uh, plant riparian strips to keep cattle away from watercourses. You could have then a 90 mile um route right around it that could be walked or cycled and that if people really could see it and feel it and touch it and, and be in it then they would also have sense of ownership over it and would be keeping an eye as to what's going on. And we need immediate moratorium on planning applications for new and expanding intensive uh, farming. Um, civil servants are obviously working hard on trying to find a solution to this but at the end of the day the buck's going to stop with whoever if they do get back to work is in charge of DERA and whether they care. Loch Ney has never really been a priority for any minister or, um, or for very few politicians um, I think, or, and indeed for many of the civil servants. I think all you have to do is read the report that they drew up around a decade ago when Loch Ney was last on the table to see that um, when they concluded that there was no discernible interest, I think was the phrase used, um, that they could identify in bringing it back into some form of public ownership. Where, where politics are based on orange or green uh, in, in terms of political colours, they don't have environmental policies, that's a problem. They simply don't have any and we have got to be making that point that while they're living in the past, our future is at stake. We have a rights of nature position. Our core ask is an independent environmental and ecological protection agency that has the power of enforcement. Uh, bad, bad actors might stop acting badly if they were prosecuted effectively. And we also need a department for energy and climate change. Um, ecologists, something as simple as having every council hire a couple of ecologists. The chief executive and the top team in the Ulster Farmers Union are leading the corporate agenda in agriculture. And that's where it's all going wrong, ladies and gentlemen. A welfare bill and a just transition for farmers. We don't want to see farmers left high and dry. So there are issues around the democratic ownership of the law and the democratic management of the law in the overall interest of the sustainability of the law itself. The polluter pays principle was acknowledged, which is a legal principle, suggesting that if you pollute something, you pay for the consequences, as in pay financially. We have to ensure that everybody who has an interest in this law declares that interest, declares what it is, declares the benefits they currently get from the law and the contribution they're prepared to make to it. If farmers are properly paid, you're going to see a balance within the countryside because a lot of the part-time farmers will become full-time farmers and the intensive model will get squeezed out. It must in perpetuity be locked in as a public asset, never ever to be able to be sold to a private owner.